Uh, this video is a repetition of the proof of the theorem of one step subgroup test and is an answer to a um, to a message I got. Um, okay, I'm going to try to make it a bit more clear. I think this proof is absolutely essential in this uh, chapter of subgroups and not only of subgroups I think this is the, the most important proof okay one step subgroup test let G be a group and H a non-empty subset of G then H is a subgroup of G if H is closed under division that is if a B inverse is in H whenever A and B are in H. You can check the video 8 if, I, if I'm not mistaken and check how I explain that you have a, a group G and then here you have a, a subset first and you have some elements here okay and all that is very important but here I'm going to get directly into the the, the proof okay the hypothesis is and I'm going to write it in big characters the hypothesis is a times the inverse of B is in H if this happens then H is a subgroup of G okay and we are going to work with this so uh, in order to prove that H is a subgroup we have to prove that the operation is associative Two, the identity is in H. Three, the um, any inverse of form. Um, let us say uh, for all x in H, there is a inverse, and this inverse is also in H. Okay. And at the end, to check if the, if H is closed for the operation okay um, we have H is a subset of G of set G so we have set G here and here we have set H right uh, and H uh, and H is a, by hypothesis, a non-empty subset of G. Okay, so we know that H is a non-empty subset. It's only a subset, okay. But the elements are elements that are in G. And G is a group. G, under the operation, whatever that is, uh, is a group. So, in order for J to be a group, uh, the operation has to be associative. So, under the same operation, these elements will also be associative. Okay, this is absolutely clear. The, the operation is associative here. Okay, H under this operation will be associative too. Okay, so associativity checked. Now we have to check if the identity is in H. So the theorem says if A times B inverse, so A times B inverse, we are going to work under this hypothesis, is in H. Okay, so A can be any element and B can be ele any element. Let us say that A, 
is x. And imagine that b is also x. Under this hypothesis, if a times b inverse is in x, so if this happens, under this hypothesis, so if a is x and b is x, we are going to have x times x inverse, because b is x too. OK, this is a times b inverse. That's our hypothesis. And that will be the identity. So, if this happens, the identity will be in H. OK, second, the identity is in H. Yes, checked. Under this hypothesis, that's true. Now I want to see if for any element in H there is an inverse. OK, what is my main tool? Well, my only tool is that A times the inverse is in H. OK, so A can be the identity and B can be X. So I'm going to use this. If A is the identity, and we already checked that the identity is in H, if A is the identity and B is X, then A, B inverse will be the identity times the inverse. But the identity times the inverse is the inverse. So if A times the in inverse B is in H, so this one will be in H, because A times B inverse will be in H, right? But A times B inverse, if we choose A as the identity, will be the identity times the inverse of X. But the identity times the inverse uh, is X inverse. So X inverse is in H. OK, checked. For all x in h, there is an inverse in h. Well, since h, the operation is associative in h. There is an identity in h. And for any element in h, there will be an inverse in h. The, only, the last thing will be to check if the operation is if it is closed, meaning if I perform x times y, is that going to be in H for sure? Well, uh, we just saw that for any x in H, the inverse will be in H. So if x is in H, the inverse will be in H. Another element, if y is in h, the inverse will be in h. They will all be in h, right? OK. So, um, our basic tool is this one. a times b inverse is in h. OK, let us call a, we are going to call x. I'm going to call this one x, OK? And I'm going to call B the inverse of Y. We proved here on the third step that the inverse is always in H2. OK. So what is X times Y? Well, no. Um, let me do this. Um, so. Um, Our tool is this one, A times B inverse. OK, A times B inverse. What is A? A is X. What is B? B is Y inverse, Y inverse. B inverse, inverse. OK, but what, what is this? This is 
xy. So xy will be in h. So a times b inverse, if a times b inverse is in h, if a times b inverse is if a times b inverse is in h, and we saw it is in h, a times b inverse, a is x, and b is y inverse, so, and that, that is x, y, that means uh, the, op uh, the operation be between any two elements will be in h. Okay, so check to so if a times b inverse is in h meaning means that the operation is we proved we just proved that the operation is associative there is an identity there will be an inverse for any element and is closed under the operation and that concludes the theorem because if a times b inverse is in h whenever a and b are in h h h will be a subgroup of g okay and this was our main framework okay if this one if this one is in h all the axioms are um, valid <laughs>